Welcome to Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. You can find us at lcara.net, on Facebook, on YouTube, and on Instagram. Hello folks, this is Chris, KY4CKP, and I'm here today. I just want to do a short uh, video on the DX Commander uh, all-band vertical antenna uh, that uh, is produced in England by uh, Callum McCormick, uh, m0mcx.co.uk, that's his call sign, and it's a great portable system, but I'm going to be using it in a semi-permanent installation, and he's got some long-term testing on one of these. It's working out well so far, and I just want to introduce some of the build components of this kit because it's really meant to be an assembled but do-it-yourself kit. So you can see it ships with all the components and I just wanted to go over a little bit on what we'll be doing with these components. I'll uh, do some pre-assembly. I'll record some of the final uh, completions of some of those assemblies and then we'll be putting it up uh, in my backyard and doing some testing with it. So primarily a three-part a uh, little short series here on this antenna and then uh, some occasional testing and we'll probably uh, post some of the results on that uh, anywhere from <clears throat> certainly 10 to uh, 40 meters and you can uh, get 80 meters with say an inverted L type arrangement and you could work something out for 160 meters the uh, elements can be a little bit longer so it might be a little bit tougher <clears throat> but you can do an inverted L for 80 to get that on there. So I'm going to look at doing 80, 40, 20, and 10, at least primarily, maybe six as well. Uh, you can do six. So when you look at these uh, pre-drilled plates that they have, you can see there's plenty of holes. You've got your main guide points, the large holes, and you've got six, six elements that you can run vertically. So it's basically a fan dipole, just run vertically. And so we've got our plates, our spreader plates that are going to go up the pole towards the top of the pole. You've got the uh, eye spreader that will go at the top of that pole. But what I wanted to talk about briefly was just some of the build components, kind of show uh, what's gonna be going on. I'll do the majority of that off camera, and then I'll be coming back and showing how to finish each one of those components. I'll leave uh, one example left so we can film that to show that to you. But it's not a hard kit. It's not a hard kit to put together. So uh, the first thing I can talk about is at least currently, uh, Callum is shipping uh, what he calls D10 wire. It is military rated. Uh, it's a pretty decent wire. It's maybe not great wire, but it's really a pretty decent wire. It has decent uh, flexibility to it. It's not real stiff. And at least currently, while he still has a supply, he's shipping around 100 meters, 100, a little bit more than 100 meters. So you can cut your elements, or if you have enough left over your radials, uh, you can use the wire he has, or you can supply your own, depending on your links or how many radials you want. You may supply some of your own. I may go get some additional wire to do the radials out of. Uh, we'll see how mine turns out, uh, being that I'm going to add 80 meters to it. Uh, so we'll be cutting that up, uh, not before too long. <clears throat> he also supplies some shock cord, okay? Uh, a length of shock cord here, because uh, what we're going to do for the elements in particular is we're going to uh, string them up when you extend the pole and run it through your guy lines, right? So you've got six positions here that you can run through. And then he ships some snap clips, okay? And so you can take that and you can string up your elements and give them some uh, tension, but also some flexibility. So when they're in the wind, and things like that they're not just under a static tension it's kind of like what we uh, in a lot of ways would like to do maybe with our tents or other things or if you're hanging banners or anything it'd be nice to have that that springy tension in there keep it reasonably taut but also allow for some movement especially in the wind so he supplies some of that he supplies some heat shrink we'll talk about using this uh, when you create your elements and you cut those off what he recommends is that you uh, make a loop uh, once you've got your length established make a loop and put some of the heat shrink on there and that way you've got a tie and a clip point 
So we'll be talking about that and showing that coming up. Um, I've also got some more. This is, again, glue-lined heat shrink. So I've got some more of this, but heat ships what should be enough. But if you need some more, if you mess up a little bit, uh, it's not that hard to find. Harbor Freight, places like that have, have uh, uh, the, the glue line. <clears throat> He's got some tubing here, and it's really just aquarium tubing. But with this, what we can do is he ships the hose clamps, stainless steel hose clamps, to put at each major section of the pole. And you can simply cut this to length, put it on your, on your clamp, cut it to length, and of course, uh, gives you a lot of friction so that it can give you a nice, again, if you're going for that more uh, semi-permanent installation or uh, at least uh, you know several weeks install, uh, gives it a lot of friction so that your sections won't accidentally collapse, especially again, uh, if there's wind and things going on. So we'll be showing cutting that off and, put, and putting those together. I'll do most of it off camera, but I'll show, I'll show one of those. It, it's not hard, you just cut it to length and uh, it's not gonna be a problem. The thing I like about these, these hose clamps that he's provided, they're stainless steel. Um, and I've got hose clamps and I'm sure a lot of us have used them for one thing or another, even, even on actual hoses on occasion, is uh, not only are they slotted, but they can take Phillips screwdriver tip. Most of the ones I've ever used here in the US only have the slotted, which is uh, a real pain for a lot of things, but it was nice to see these actually have uh, a head for slot or uh, Phillips as well. He supplies some paracord 550 paracord, you can use whatever uh, line you want to use. I've got some bright orange, uh, depending on what I'm doing with it. And for my guy lines, I may use the bright orange, uh, especially so the guy lines aren't a trip hazard. But he supplies some paracord. Again, he supplies the clips. They're two-piece snap-together clips. We'll show those. We've got those. We've got the uh, element and, and spreader plates and things. We'll be showing that. Uh, and then the main components for the base of the antenna is the radial plate so this goes close to the ground at the bottom of the antenna we'll be showing that and you've got room where you can use the hardware that's included he has stainless steel hardware he has the blade connectors and things he has the, the larger yellow ones which you can use they work out nicely for your radials and he has some blue ones some slightly smaller ones and it's uh, stainless steel hardware and so you can take uh, the screws, you should have all of your uh, holes should be uh, tapped, drilled and tapped. We're trying to do this on camera. But it should go in there. I'll check those. <clears throat> but this will be at the bottom, the very base of the antenna, pretty much at or near the ground. He assembles an SO239. You uh, put this in here. It'll actually go like this. So you'll connect your antenna there. And then you've got the element plate, and this will go a little bit higher on there, and you'll connect the SO239 here. All your elements will come up from here. Again, it's got room for six of them if you want to run six. Certainly don't have to. Uh, three, four, five, six, however many bands you want to work. And these will sit slightly on top of each other. You'll have your radials coming off down here. And so these will be about like this on the pole at the base. And then you'll have your guy, guy lines that go up. These are nice and heavy and thick, so they shouldn't bend much. And again, you don't need lots of tension, but you can use a little tension. So we got our SO239. I uh, ordered um, 100 feet of LMR400 uh, marine grade uh, uh, cabling so I can run to, uh, around to my backyard, my shacks towards the front. So we'll be showing uh, some of the assembly parts. And then we'll be uh, getting into, we'll be testing and cutting the aerials and the, uh, the ground radials, or at least the elements. And um, we'll be putting up and then we'll be doing some testing with it. So again, this is Chris, KY4CKP. Uh, there'll be more to come on this antenna as we are assembling it and getting it up. And I just wanted to get in a fairly short introduction to this and uh, let you folks know that this is going to be coming up. So thanks for tuning in and we'll catch you later. Thank <laughs> you.